So this has been done before and undoubtedly there's many other YouTube videos up here showing how to do this, but I figured that I'd post one to add to the collective. So today, me and my buddy Jay here are going to be building a directional UHF antenna out of a whole bunch of random parts. So for those of you who remember what over-the-air television is and would like to partake in receiving it, I'll show you how to do it. So there's a bunch of stuff that you're going to need. And the first thing is a length of 2x4. This was specifically cut so that I could make a 4-bay bow tie antenna. Uh, you can cut it shorter or longer depending. This is about 40 inches. This little piece of 1x is for the base. And we've got, oh yeah, flashy, it's very nice. Uh, we've got some regular old coat hangers over here. The best to use for these are traditional wire coat hangers, just like this here. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't find more than two of them, so those are out. And we'll be using these nice white ones, which we're going to have to strip down first. So we've also got some regular old screws here, drywall screws, and some wire. This is random stuff. You know, we just happen to have these things lying around from tearing apart other electronic instruments. And we've got some, you might remember these things here. These are, let me get this right, 75 to 300 ohm converters? Transformers. Transformers, whatever they are. They're those things. Those things that your grandma used to use. Um, this allows you to connect the antenna to the back of your TV or a converter box. There you go. Like what he said. And... <laughs> Um, then we've got some other miscellaneous parts, some washers here, and some ring terminals, and other odds and ends. And there's also tools that I'll be using, including my drill, and some wire cutters, and wire strippers, and things of that nature. And I'm probably missing all kinds of things, but that's the gist of it. By the way, since I wasn't introduced in the video, I'm Jay. Everyone say hi. Hi. <laughs> Not you. Oh. <laughs> So, the first step is to cut all of your coat hangers. And we're going to be making cuts right up here. Just like that. Just use some uh, nice handy pliers that have a little cutting blade on them, whatever that's called. And just go ahead and cut the tops off of all of those. Uh, we are going to be making a four bay bow tie antenna. And to do that, we're going to need four coat hangers. If you were making an 8-bay, you'd need 8, 2-bay, you'd need 2, etc. And poof, the carpet's green. Um, okay, the next step is to bend all of the kinks out of these. Oh, God. What you're trying to do here is make this length here decently straight and matching this length because you're going to be cutting this in half and you want to have a nice perfect A or, or a V shape right here. By the way, if you're wondering where to get metal hangers, Walmart, $2 for a 10 pack. Everywhere else, mm, good luck. They're all plastic. Alright, once you have all of your coat hangers straightened, the next step is to cut them to length. That's about 16 inches there, so I'm going to cut right in the middle, right about there, and then fold it. Now what you're going for here is lengths from 7 to 8 inches. So that's about 8 right there. I'll cut this side down to 8, make them nice and uniform, and then do that to all the rest. It's not a perfectly exact science. You can be off by a small amount. Whatever length you do choose, you should make them all uniform. Yes, that's a very good point. Thank you for adding that, Jay. So it would probably be a good time to explain why 7 or 8 inches. The recommended length is 7, which puts it right in the middle of the UHF wavelength. However, since not every single station, and especially not in this market, 
is and is UHF, it'd probably be good to at least lengthen it somewhat to the eight to aim more for the VHF range. Which, to those who have no idea what he just said, uh, that just means you'll get more channels if you make them a little bit longer. You don't want them to be too long because then they won't be very stable and they'll move around on you. But eight inches is kind of a good middle ground. Okay, now that you've got your V's made, it is time to mark where they will be going on the 2x4. And so to do that, you just measure every 7 inches down from the top and put a line across right here. Where did my tape measure go? There we go. So there you go. There's your 7 inches, 14 inches, 21 inches, etc. If you're only going to do 2 bay, which would be 2 sets of V's, then obviously you only need to have two marks. Once you've got those lines going across, and I'm setting my washers right down on there and spacing them about that far apart, you don't want them to touch once they're screwed in. So I kept them nice and far apart and then put a mark across the line. That's where I'll be drilling the hole, because I'll be pre-drilling before I put the screws in. Okay, so once you have all of the holes drilled where you marked it there, it is time to start attaching your dive holes here. And to do that, the first thing we'll need to do is to cut uh, the insulating stuff off of these. Now if you happen to be using coat hangers that don't have this, this plastic over top of them, you don't need to do this step, uh, but the way that I figured out that it works for me is to just take a knife and cut around them just like that. Make a nice even cut all the way around it and then actually bust out my lighter because I'm a pyro and I always have a lighter on me. I don't smoke. And heat that stuff up and it seems to come off relatively easy once it's pretty warm. That or I just take a nice slice off like that, if you can see that, and uh, then unwrap it the rest of the way. Works alright, but you can use whatever method uh, works for you. Point is to get bare metal there, because you need it to be able to conduct uh, a bit of electricity. So, once you have all the insulation stripped off of your coat hangers, the next step is to start installing them on the 2x4. And to do that, the first thing we need to do is cut some wire, like this here, and um, strip the insulation off one end of it and attach one of these ring terminals, then clamp that down. Once you have that made, it's very simple, you just put the ring terminal down, Put the coat hanger right on top of it. Put one of the washers on your screw. And thread that into the hole that we pre-drilled. And then simply tighten it down with the drill. So that's what you'll get. And that is one completed bow tie. As they call it. Once you finish doing this, it's very simple. You just continue on until you have all four sets of dipoles attached. Now there's one thing that you should know. This is a four bay that we're making here. And because there are four sets of dipoles, you want to actually cross these wires. Um, as you can see, I've attached another one of the ring terminals to this end of the wire and that will be going to the dipole on the left not on the right and that crossover will happen here not in the middle but then also down here between these two so there'll be crossover right here just like like that and the same down here 
but the middle will be straight. 